Wow, what a morning. Oh my God, what a morning. And I mean that. Oh my God. You're amazing. That, that song and the message of that song. You know, when Moses, when God offered to Moses, I'm going to give you everything you want in the land. All the promises are yours. And I'm even going to send angels to be with you, but I'm not going. That's the greatest test of spiritual leadership. It's our greatest test, pastors that are here, leaders that are here, family members, family leaders that are here. That's your greatest test. Are you willing to accept the promises, the, bl- the blessings, the pleasures of the Lord without Him, without His presence? Our answer is no. We're with, uh, we're with Moses. No, you don't go. We don't go. Papa's not in the house. We're not going into that house. Yeah? Well, man, so, so welcome all of those that have come around, from around the world. We have about half of the group that's coming in this afternoon to be with us over the next couple of days. We have six nations represented, uh, 11 different uh, states within the United States, and we're just so thankful uh, for the, the, the uh, relationships that we have around the world and for the blessings that they are to us. This is a time of strategic life exchange where we get to share our lives together. And uh, so those of you who are part of the house here, please be praying for us over the next 48 hours or so and uh, just see what God can do. Is that okay with you? All right, so uh, uh, my most favorite man in the world is in the house this morning. My dad. Let's just stand up, Dad. He's 93 years young. And when I fly out of Sacramento, he still drives me to the airport. He's a better driver than I am, believe me. (laughs) So, yeah. I mean, it may look like I'm surrounded. But I'm surrounded by you. Oh, I love that. Don't you? I'm just wrecked this morning. I see so many good friends in the house. Our own people here that I love being with every time we can be together. So thanks for, uh, for being who you are. Loving on the house the way you love. Thanks so much. Uh, we're going to need some help right at the end of our service today. So we need, uh, Ryan, how many people do we need to help move some stuff around so we can get ready for this? If we can get 10 10 guys that can help us move chairs from the other building over to here and move tables out of this room and kind of help us get situated for all these lovely people who've come to be part of our team together. If there are 10 guys in the house, could you just tell me right now that you can can stay for 15 minutes after the service today and help me? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We can use you all. So just meet Ryan at the back. Uh, in the foyer, and it shouldn't take more than 15 minutes to to clear it all out. So thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate that. All right. um, How many of you enjoyed the day with Bill? Wow, was that phenomenal or what? That was like having a, a, a beautiful dinner. You know, we dined. We didn't eat. We dined. And in my world, there's a big difference. You might eat at McDonald's. I don't. I dine <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> All right, this morning I, 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 want to, uh, I want to just talk about, I just want to talk about one thing. And I want to, I want to present a thought to us this morning. And I want to, then, then to do some ministry out of that. I want to illustrate it and do some ministry out of that. And I'm going to try to do that in about 20 minutes. So uh, you know that's not going to happen. Uh, <laughs> But I run the risk this morning of in this, in this very contained space I want to walk in today of misunderstanding and of not understanding that there's further development within our lives that need to be applied to what I'm going to share with you. Okay, you know what I mean? So sometimes part of my role is to help you understand what that process is. Sometimes it's simply to drop it in your lap and say, get, get with it. 
you know, discover for yourself some things about the process. And when you do that, as you all know, when you discover them for yourself, when you gain revelation in your own journey, that revelation stays with you much longer than the revelation that's lectured out in this kind of thing. So that's what I'm going to pray for you and pray over you today, uh, that that would happen. Um, And so I'm going to trust you to do so. And it's just simply this. I want to talk about the power of yes. The power of yes. Uh, so we go to Luke. I'm going to read a couple of, couple of quick stories here. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Now the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of Ga- Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin, betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And don't worry, it's not Christmas yet. Some of you are going, oh, I didn't have a message ready for my Christmas. No, don't worry. Still got a, got a while. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Boy, I wish I could stay there for a while. We think favor looks one thing like one thing. (laughs) Favor often looks like what's about to happen to Mary. (laughs) Right? And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. We read that so glibly. (laughs) I've got to go on. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, well, how can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that holy one who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now Elizabeth, your relative, has conceived a son of her old age, and this is now the sixth month of, for her, who is called barren, for, God, for with God nothing is impossible. And then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. The power of yes. So go over to chapter 5 of the same book, Luke. Jesus is out preaching, he comes and says, as the multitude pressed on him to hear the word of God, he stood uh, by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land, and and he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, you don't understand. We have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they got, had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also was James and John and the son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid, for now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. The power of yes. Two stories that illustrate that when we say yes to the word of the Lord something magnificent happens. And, and you got to understand, and I think you do, that Mary did not understand. She did not understand. There is no way that saying, oh, the Holy Spirit's going to come on you and the Most High is going to overpower you and you'll conceive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I get that. Fully understand. No. She said yes when she didn't understand. Peter understood something, and what he understood was his history. You don't go fishing in the middle of the day, and especially when you fished at the right time and you caught nothing. He knew what was right, and yet he said yes to the word of the Lord and caught caught fish like he'd never caught before, and it revolutionized his life. The power of yes. There are other stories in the Bible, we all know them, Gideon. You know, caught in seven years of being trapped by his enemies, the the people of Israel camping out in caves, and he's in a wine press winnowing the wheat. 
And he has no reason to believe he can be the savior of his nation. And it takes him a while to believe he is the mighty man of God, the mighty man of valor. But eventually he gets a prophetic word in the enemy's camp. Come on. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, huh? Come on, he was surrounded. 135,000 with all the military might they had against 300 who had a stick and a vase and a horn. And he said, yes. When he heard the prophetic word, he goes back to his people. He said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to surround the enemy. All 300 of us. The power of yes. Yes. And he gains a great victory. See, the same thing with with Esther, who did not want to go before the king, right? She did not want, you you know, Mordecai, you need to understand, if I go before the king and he's having a bad day, I die. Right? But she says yes. And she saves the nation of Israel from absolute oblivion. The power of yes. There's so many, so many within Scripture. But right here in this audience today, How many of us have said yes when we didn't understand? How many of us said yes when we didn't have the resources in front of us? How many said yes before the resources came? How many have said yes when we didn't want to say yes? Power of yes. That's why you're here today. That's how we came into the kingdom. We said yes to an offer we could not refuse, even when we didn't understand. How many of you understood when you received Christ, you absolutely understood what you were doing? None of us. That's the beauty of the Holy Spirit drawing us. Jehovah Sneaky comes in and we say yes when we don't even know what we're saying yes to. How many answered a a call and you go, I don't know why I'm coming forward, but I got to get up there. Right? Power of yes. So I look at Dano here and, and I hear this amazing music out of Turkey. And I remember... And God spoke to Dano, said, listen, I want you to change worship in the world. You know what that felt like, Dano. Like, what on earth are you saying? But Dano said yes. And today, how many nations, Dan? 70 language groups are being transformed in their worship. 70 language groups. What you saw on this platform this morning is a revolt of, a result of him saying yes. The power of yes. I see Troy and Leanna back over here, Brewer. Where are you? I'm, I lost you. There you are. <laughs> you mind if I give a little of this testimony, Troy? You mind? All right, that's just crazy. Ten years ago? Has it been ten years? Ten years ago, Mark, Mark uh, and I, Mark Crawford and I were we were invited to go to their church. They had a ministry going on that fed, fed the, the needy every Saturday. It was a really awesome ministry. People brought their cars and they put food in their trunks of their car and prayed over them. They'd had healings and salvations while they were doing that. And then they had this attachment to that ministry that they called a church. And it was struggling. Man, it was struggling. It was in a little, little very small room you know, we, we just, it was just an interesting place. And I so admired them for staying in that place, I mean, and just going after it. But, but Troy was saying no. And God was calling he and Leanna to take, that, take responsibility, not only for that feeding ministry, but for that church. And he was a reluctant warrior in that arena. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? right, I'm right. And we had some God moments in that weekend, out on a fire pit, out in their backyard. And out of that, they said yes. When they said yes, almost all of hell was released upon them. They went through the worst years of their life, but they stayed tenacious with the yes that they had said. And what, two months ago, Deb and I had the privilege of
minister in their church. They had a whole huge facility given to them, free. Three services that morning, packed. That, that Saturday, they gave out 100,000 pounds of food. People, people lined up in cars the night before and slept in their cars because the line would get so long. People got saved that morning, healed that morning as they prayed for them. They're on radio, they're on television, they're, they're making a mark. They've, they've rescued uh, people out of sex slavery. Last year they spent uh, half a million dollars rescuing people out of sex slavery. They support, they support uh, leper colonies. I mean, this is what I'm, what I'm saying, is there's power in a yes. It doesn't make everything easy. It just establishes you for the provision of God to come into our lives and do what he's called us to. I see Gary and Carissa sitting in the front row here. We love these two. They're amazing. And, you know, I remember... Uh, Where's Magnus? Magnus, where, where are you? Magnus here from Sweden. Good to have you in the house too. We miss you, man. Uh, and he'd, ha- he'd seen prophetically them ministering in, in the city of Davis. And uh, so we started talking about, Dan had some similar prophetic words over that, and so we started talking to them about them. They're going, no, no, no. In fact, Gary, Gary went there and he came back and said, I hate Davis. Am I having a right, David? <laughs> right? He went there and said, I don't like that city. I don't, it was, it was, it was, you know? <laughs> but God began to work on them and call them to that city. And, and they said, yes, and now we have, a, we have mission, mission, uh, mission, I was going to say Mission Fiji, Mission Davis, which is our a second campus in the city of Davis. And they're loving on that city in an amazing way. There's power in that, and we're expecting huge things. In fact, God God spoke to me one day. I don't think I've even shared this with you, Dano. There's going to be such a blessing on that ministry, it's going to cause Mission Vacaville to be jealous. Yeah, come on. Power of yes. Power of yes. I see the Tulios back there. Where are you? John and Marcia Tulio right back here. Love those guys. They came through our school here. They weren't married the first year, second year. They were married. That's what we do. <laughs> came from Southern California, a Filipino culture in Southern California, that they were soon to find out that uh, Southern California Filipino culture is different than Filipino culture in the Philippines. So they had quite an adventure, but went through our school, and, you know, they're newly married, and, and they had opportunity down in Southern California where their dad was the ch- pastor of a church, leader of a church. And Mark Crawford ha- happened to, to see them one day and say, how, how would you, what would you think about working with Dave and I in the Philippines and doing schools in the Philippines? And they said, yes. Yeah. And now they're, we're celebrating their 10th anniversary in the Philippines Woo! today. And the school's doing amazing stuff, hitting, touching the medical field, the government field, just about every field in that nation. You know, there's so many people in this room who have said yes to leadership in their family, to really lead their family. They said yes to the things of God in, in, in operating businesses in, in a way that's kingdom, in, in going after entrepreneurial stuff that, that will explode and help explode the kingdom. All of those things are being done in people in this room right now. Aren't you thankful for that? Right now in, in Fiji, I shared a little bit of this a couple weeks ago, but i share it again because I have a point to it. Uh, and that is, you know, right now, we just, brought, we just welcomed a team. Well, let me, let me start that over again. There's so much going on there. Uh, on Janu- uh, December 21st, I'm flying to Fiji to be there on, Janu- on December 21st to do a wedding for my national director. He's getting married. Keely. He's been praying for a wife for seven years. His wife died seven years ago. We've been praying with him. He's he got one, and he's got a good one. 
And, uh, <laughs> and so, you know, seven years seemed to be something about that. I don't know. And so uh, I'm flying there. I'll be on the ground two days and fly home in time to be home with my family for Christmas. In fact, uh, Joel Butts right here is going to go with me. And, uh, and it's just a real joy to do that. But what is happening in Fiji is just exploding. Uh, right now, they're, they just re- a team just returned from the Solomon Islands where they, they ministered for almost two months uh, among a newly recognized people group in, in, in the Solomon Islands and did youth crusades and brought people to the Lord and taught on, on all kinds of kingdom stuff and just had a, just an amazing time. And these were, these were graduates of our school that just graduated in July. Another group of those, of those school students went off to Australia and worked among the Aborigines. And so we have, have this, this kind of stuff going on. We've got island nations now being adopted by, that, by the Fijians. So Kitabas, who is an island nation that, that uh, Caleb Byerly introduced us to, we'll, we'll soon have a school there. We have, a, we'll have a school starting this next year in the Solomon Islands. We have, uh, out of that, these two people came from Kitabas, came to our school uh, this last year, went through our school in, the, in Fiji, and we discovered while they were there that the man was actually from an island, island group of three islands called to, uh, Tokelau. It's the smallest recognized nation in the world. Has land mass of 48 kilometers. But this guy's from there, and we sent him from the school to be a missionary to Tokelau. We're, we're now laying the groundwork to do, to do a school in the uh, Samoan Islands. All this out of Fiji. I'm not doing it. I'm the international director, but I'm not doing it. They're doing it. How did that happen? I had so framed my life to never put myself in a position I I thought I would fail in. Anybody relate to that? And I'd been in ministry for 20 some years at that point. But I'd been so careful, so trained, I was so honed in being able to say no. Because if I said yes, I might fail. Deb and I were in, in England, not speaking there. I wouldn't do that. Because I'd had a really bad experience. I won't, I won't go into that. I don't have time. And I, I'd said after that bad experience, I'm never going to speak through an interpreter again. Just not going to do it. So I, we were in England to, at a conference we were attending. And while we were there, um, Kamawanga, Filimoni Kamawanga, Tala Tala Filimoni Kamawanga, who, is, uh, who was the head of the Assemblies of God at the time and pastored of the largest church in, in that South Pacific area, uh, was, was, was here on a Friday night while we were there in England. When we got back, we met with him. Dan, uh, Regina, were you in that meeting too? I thought so. Dan and Regina and Deb and I had meetings with these two guys that like are the atypical Fijian. They are Fijian. And we had lunch with them. We got done... And you shake their hand, your hand gets totally, you know, you don't have a hand anymore. It's all surrounded by this Fijian hand. And we got up and Dan walked away and Dan says, those are the largest people I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> or was it Regina? Was it Regina who said that? <laughs> a few months later, he called me and I, that's, that was the only contact I had with this guy. And he called me and said, Dave, I want you to come and preach the, the National Conference for the Assemblies of God, 4,000 ministers all of, and their wives and all that stuff. And I, was, I, had, I had this down. I had all the spiritual reasons why I couldn't do that. Right? My church needed me. My family needed me. My ministry is just here. All of those things. But inside it was, I don't want to fail. I don't want to go and fail there. And Jehovah Sneaky while I was trying to say no, out of my mouth came yes. I'm telling you, I I was the most shocked person in the world. And Deb was the second one. But I said yes. And now, and you as a people, 
I remember standing on this platform and we were having just stuff coming against it. I mean, it's just like nobody wanted me to go anywhere. It's true. Where'd our pastor go? Oh, he's in Fiji. He's in... Why? Why isn't he here? I stood on this platform. I woke up Sunday morning and the Lord says, you go to Fiji this week. You go. And I was done saying no. So I said, okay, I got you know, my spirit. I stood before the people and I said, listen, you don't have to pay for this. I just want you to pray for me. I have to go. I'll be there this week. You don't have to pay. You know, I, I was being real generous. We'll take, Deb and I will pay for this, we're gonna, but we're going to go to Fiji. And there was a turnaround in that moment. It was one of those critical moments where the congregation said, yes. Woman walked up, walked up to us, standing right here. Well, no, we had an extension out here at the time. Standing right here, and, and the, this woman walked out, and she grabbed a bunch of money, she put it in my pocket. She said, you can't keep us from living in this blessing. And people began to do that. People began to pour finances at my feet to pay for that. And our church said, yes. And now we have what I just described to you going on in Fiji. I can't even tell you all that's happening there. The power of yes. That was 19 years ago. But here's, here's the thing I want us to understand. We cannot stand smugly in the yes of yesterday. Because there is a yes to respond to today. There is going to be a yes to respond to tomorrow. And you're not going to be able to necessarily understand it. It's not going to be reasonable. You're not going to be able to calculate it. You may even want to say no. But in your spirit, you know it's a yes. And here's, here's the good thing. You know, when, when that happens, you will face opposition, right? We all know that. How many have said yes and then there's been no opposition? <laughs> right? You're going to go through it. But to me, that opposition, that opposition prophesies my success. It actually prophesies my success. Right? It stands in front of me and I can look at it and say, you're going down. You're the giant that has to fall so I can walk along, across you into my destiny. And that's the greatest joy of it. You're going to face that. And, and, and the next one's for you. And the next one's for me that, that God's going to say, I want you to do this. I want you to be part of this. And, and the yes is going to come from me. It's going to, be, it's going to have a higher level of opposition. But you're ready for it. And you're not even going to have the higher level of opposition. You're going to have a higher level of fruit out of that. That's the joy of it. Shakespeare said, what is past is prologue. It just simply means best is yet to come. That's all it means. Deb, I'm going to ask you to come up here. Ryan, would you walk? Would you, you know, let me, let me tell you something. This woman is amazing. And I don't think she knows this. But we just missed our anniversary. It was, it was five days ago and we forgot. <laughs> we both forgot. <laughs> totally forgot, man. It's the first time. I have. It's not her first time. But it's first time. <laughs> but six, seven weeks ago, she had one hip replaced. She's doing great. And three weeks from Monday, she gets the other one replaced. She'll be the bionic woman. You need, she needs a mic, right? Ryan, thank you. I want her to share, as we wrap this up, I want to share a story. I want her to share a story of, that came out of this, uh, this time. Happy anniversary. Yeah, happy anniversary. <laughs> 47 years. I know. I know. Troy, Troy asked me this morning, he said, he said, uh, how long have you guys been married? He must have had a word of knowledge or something. He said, how long have you guys been married? I said, well, it would be 47 years uh, this month. Oh, my God. I said, wait, wait. Oh, my well, God. What's the date? <laughs> what's the date? <laughs> oh, well, we've been a little busy. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. I for, I've only forgotten once, but I didn't forget. I just didn't realize it was October 23rd. 
Does that make sense? Like I didn't like, like I don't know when my anniversary is. I just didn't know it was my anniversary. <laughs> this, this excuse gets weaker and weaker every year. Every year. Oh my gosh. What am I doing? I'm in such shock right now. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, what am I doing? Okay, what am I doing? Okay. Um, I've been dealing with um, a degeneration in my, both of my hips for about two and a half, three years. And um, the first time I went to the doctor, but, you know, I was having a lot of pain, and he looked at the x-rays, he goes, well, you're bone on bone. And I'm like, uh, I just thought it was a muscle thing. You know, I don't know. Something I could power through, you know, that's me. I can, I can get over this. And, the, and he said, uh, I said, well, what do we do about that? And he goes, well, Really, your option is hip replacement. And I, I was in such shock, kind of like I'm feeling right now, about missing my anniversary. Um, <laughs> I just stared at him, and I just could not, I could not even comprehend that. And I said, no, we're, we're not doing that. Um, is, there, <laughs> is, is there something else we can do? He goes, well, we can give you a shot that might help for you know, a little bit or something, and, and that was probably a couple years ago. So for the last two years, I've been, live, you know, living with bone on bone on, in both of my hips. So it was getting increasingly more and more difficult to function, and we went to the doctor to the, see the surgeon. I don't know what it's been now, but a few months ago. And um, he showed me the x-rays and what was happening in the bones. Now the bones are not just bone on bone, but now they're cysts formed on the bones because of this, how long, and, and he goes, it's time to fix this. And I, he looked at me and I said, what did I say, did I just said okay, I said okay. And so, just saying, I said yes, and within four minutes, it seemed like the nurses were in, I had a pile of papers and they were writing out schedules of all the things I had to do to get ready for surgery and I, I thought I was going to faint, you know. I'm like, wait a minute, I just kind of said, okay, you know, let's think about it, you know. <laughs> and, and they had it on the calendar, yep, six weeks from now, you know, and so this is all the stuff you have to do before that. And I'm, I was so terrified. The reason I was terrified, like I feel like I'm not a fearful person, like I dealt with fear with the Lord about the fear of man that I lived with for so many years. So I really felt like, well, I, I'm not a fearful person. And it shocked me. I was so afraid to do this. Well, I had kind of good reason that both my father and our daughter Amy passed away from blood clots following surgery. So I'm like, if I do this, I mean, it was like for sure. If I do this, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to have a blood clot. I'm going to die. And then I felt like I can deal with that because I don't have to deal with it. You know what I mean? I just go to heaven. But um, <laughs> Thank you very much. You know what I mean? But You'd never have to remember your anniversary. I again. know. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> Bonus. Bonus. Uh, <laughs> But I knew too, too clearly what that meant for those that are left here. And I was terrified, honestly terrified. But I said yes, went home, and I'm looking at all the paperwork and everything. I'm, what have I done? And I was so afraid. I mean, like, terrified, like in my being, I was terrified. And uh, I think it was the next day. I'm not sure if it was that day or the next day. It was the next day. I, um, I hadn't been sleeping well because of the pain, and it was in the afternoon. I curled up in my chair, and I was just about to go to sleep, and I um, felt and actually even saw someone standing about where Dave is right now by my chair. And I knew it was a spiritual spirit being, and um, I just laid on the arm of my chair, and as I fell asleep, that ministering angel was just speaking truth to me. And with every statement he made, that fear and torment was leaving me. And he said, you have nothing to fear. 
I'll be with you, you will be fine. And I kind of fell asleep hearing these statements and went into a very, very deep sleep and slept for about two and a half hours, which I hadn't slept for two and a half hours in years. I woke up and Dave came in the room, I think, later and, and he kind of, did you ask me, like, what happened to you, you know? Like he said, I looked different. And I told, tried to tell him what had just happened. And I said, Dave, that terror is gone. Um, but honestly, I was still kind of afraid, if that makes sense. That overwhelming, kind of debilitating terror was gone. But, you know, it's, you know, you didn't cut your leg off. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I was still a little concerned about it. And um, a few days later, I went to a, a birthday party, and uh, the host had put on the table our name cards, but I could see the ones that were on from the people across the table from me. Um, there was a word written on the back of their name card, so I could see that. But all on mine, I could just see my name, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if there's something on the back of mine. And I turned it over, and the Tiffany had written on the back of mine, courageous. She had written you know, a word for each person that spoke to her of what is in the core of our being. And I remember looking at that card and like, I don't feel very courageous. I, I'm really afraid, you know. Um, the Lord had really helped me from that terror, but I was still afraid. So I went home and I took that card. It's still actually sitting in my kitchen. And I was just speaking to the Lord like, I'm so, I still am afraid. Uh, about this, what's going to happen? And um, he he told me, he said the act of courage does not require the absence of fear; it requires the presence of hope. <laughs> so let me try to say that again it's just so real to me he said uh, the, this is being recorded right I yeah. want, I want the to act, on a book or something the act of courage does not require the absence of fear but requires the presence of hope yeah. and honestly i told him i said i really don't know what that means it sounded true and right and he showed me um, a scene like a movie of a soldier that threw himself on a grenade and he saved, he died, but he saved his comrades. He said he was able to do that act of courage because the hope drove him that he could save his company of men if he gave his life. And so it was an act of courage that was connected to hope. And then he showed me in this kind of same scene and there was a live grenade and there was nobody else to save and the soldier could just run away and be saved. If he still threw himself on the grave, that, that's not, I mean, that's not right. You know what I mean? <laughs> he had nothing to gain. It was, would not have been an act of courage. It actually would have been a lack, lack of wisdom. And he just showed me that I didn't have to worry that just because I was afraid didn't mean I wasn't a woman of courage and that he was going to be with me. Now, I just want to share just really quick how deeply this went. Like my worst nightmare besides dying... Um, the second one was to wake up. I was reading through the paperwork, and it showed the doctor said he wasn't going to put me under. Is this, am I okay? okay. Um, under general, he was just going <laughs> to replace my hip with just a block, you know, spinal block. And I'm like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I don't think so, you know. And he goes, well, you'll well, you'll be real sleepy. I'm like. I think I want to be more than really sleepy, you know what I mean? And I said, what if I wake up and I hear you, you know, sawing and cutting? And, and he goes, well, if you do, you'll just not remember it. And I'm like, give me that paper back. I'm not doing it. So, so anyway, I was a little concerned about it. Well, guess what happened? I wake up during my surgery. Oh, yeah. So about the last probably half hour to 45 minutes of them doing, re, you know, refurbishing my leg. I wake up and the anesthesiologist is right there by me, you know, looking at me and he goes, Deborah, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I think I am. And you got to get the picture. I, they're hammering. Like, you know what I mean? I can't feel the pain, but like my body is 
you know, they're hammering something into my bone, and then I hear the saw, and then there's the drill, and I'm like, <laughs> I should not be okay with this. <laughs> And then I thought, well, this is what I do. I, I remodel things. And it, they're just remodeling. You know, they're just remodeling. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little weird. But... And so for the last probably half hour, 45 minutes of the surgery, the anesthesiologist and I are just kind of chatting. And, um, and I'm like, are we about done? He goes, yeah, I think we're about done. And, and I, literally, so I was completely awake through the rest of the surgery while they're doing the, you know, making me move and all that. Is that just amazing? But I'm just telling you, that's how deep, when the Lord answers your yes with an amen, he says amen to our yes. Sometimes we think it's just, you know, the other way around. But he says an amen to our yes. It changes, it changes everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we go to the doctor to take the staples out. Oh, oh. Oh, that's Good. Oh, that's right. Okay. <clears throat> so that was my second worst nightmare. The first one was dying, right? Um, which both my father and my daughter died uh, having their checkup after surgery. Um, Amy just said, oh, I feel dizzy, and then passed out and died. Um, so now we're going to my checkup you know, for my checkup, and I, and honestly, it wasn't even in my mind, you know. Um, so we're, I'm in the doctor's office, and it's a, a little early, because the doctor was going to be gone, so it was a little early to be removing the staples, and um, she, she, a few days early, yeah. A few days early, yeah. So I'm sorry if you have a weak stomach, but this is just what happened. So she goes, <laughs> let's just, she goes, why don't you stand there, and let's just take out every other one, and we're talking like six inches of staples, you know. Mm -hmm. She goes, let's just, I mean, 12 inches 12 of staple, inches, yeah. staples. And she goes, let's take out every other one and see how it goes. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, don't, anyway, I'm just thinking, sometimes I don't think they think of what they're saying. I'm like, what do you mean, see how it goes? Am I going to explode or something? So, and um, so I'm standing there, and they, they take out every other staple. And it doesn't feel good, but, you know, we're doing it. She goes, oh, yeah it's looking pretty good, so let's take out the rest of them. And so now I'm still standing there, and I'm starting to feel dizzy. And, um, yeah. <laughs> and I said, I, I'm feeling just dizzy. And she goes, oh, we're, we're just about done, and then we're going to put straps, you know, tape on you and everything. And by the time they got it, I said, no, I, I think I need to sit down. And there happened to be a chair right there, thankfully. And she looked at me. I had gone completely white, and... They got me to the chair, and then I went out completely cold. And um, as I'm passing out, I'm like, oh, this is what happened to Amy. She literally told me, Mom, I feel dizzy, and then died. And I had just told Dave, hey, I'm feeling dizzy, and now I'm passing out. And I'm like, oh, is this when I pass out and die? And even in the moment of actually doing what happened to Amy, I felt so peaceful. Mm -hmm. And... I remember saying, oh, is this, where? I was having a conversation with myself, and I said, oh, is this where I pass out and die? And then Dave and I were supposed to go to the grocery store after I got my staples out. And I'm like, but I don't think I can make it to the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I just passed out, and then I woke up to, I mean, I woke up. I'm here. I'm here. here. Yeah. 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 And I, re I remember her passing out, and it, I, I was not concerned at all. Yeah. I, I, I just made sure she didn't fall out of the chair, and we got her back around. And then she, the doctor comes in. I mean, they're all worried. The doctor comes in, lays her out on the table and all that, and I, it suddenly struck me. Well, that's what just happened. And it didn't, and I was, I was okay. Yeah. The power of yes unlocks provision for what God is calling us to. He unlocks provision. And we can say yes even in our fear. We can say yes even when we don't understand. And even when we don't see the provision, when the circumstances are all against it, we can still say yes when we know we've heard the word of the Lord. 
and we walk into that. So, who right now, again, don't get smug if you've done it. If you've said yes, another one's coming. Okay? And it's glorious because it's from glory to glory. He wants to take us into greater glory as we say yes to him. So, if you're, you know, what's keeping you from saying yes to the thing that you are hearing in your spirit, that you know the Holy Spirit has said to you, that you, you know, the, the, the desire of your heart that God is wanting to respond to, what is it that's keeping you from saying yes? Is it fear? Is it intimidation? Is it the fact that you don't have the resources? Listen, anything, from, anything God gives you, you're not going to have the resources until you step into it. You just won't. And then even then, it's like an everyday journey of gaining resources for that. So who's here in the throes of hearing a yes, but everything around you is saying, don't do it! Stand up, that's you. The voices of our situation can be really loud, and the voice of the Spirit very quiet. Yeah? So I just pray over you can turn off the voices of, around you and hear the voice in you and grant courage to say yes in your moment. Now I understand there's timing issues, there's all of those kinds of things, but God, we heard this yesterday from Bill, God does not respond to things until we come into agreement with him on things. There's often things he will not do until we come into agreement with him and our yes is an agreement with what he's wanting to do and produce through us. How many of you are, have said yes and now you're facing so many opposing circumstances? Why don't you stand? You've said yes and boy, the circumstances are like boom, right there in your face. I believe God wants to release a fresh favor over you and a courage to be the David who steps on the field with absolute confidence that the giant in front of you is designed to be your road to your destiny. And the giant in front of you is standing on ground that belongs to you. And it's time to take him down. It's time to take him down. You have permission to pick up stones out of this creek. Put it in your slingshot that looks like it can't do anything and release that stone towards that giant. Because if you're, if you're saying yes to the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord is saying amen to you and yes. And provision is awaiting you. How many of you, it's, it's a provision issue? Yeah, lots of you, huh? How many of you, it's, it's like one of those places you, you just want to say no. I've been there. You just want to say no. Yeah. But you know it's God. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> so here's what I want to do. I want those of you who are sitting who are absolutely confident, have no, con no conflicts whatsoever, have, are walking in absolute fearlessness and courage. <laughs> Liars! No, you don't have presently. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I want you to stand up and I want you to start ministering. Look, before you stand up, look at the people around you. I want you to start coming into agreement with them. Would you do that? Just if you, if you feel you have faith for them, you feel you have faith for them, I want you to find people around you and just begin to pray over them right now. Yeah. Ryan, can you come help your mom? Or Joel, thank you. Ask them why they're standing. Ask them why they're standing. Okay, who, who has no one praying with them yet? I want, I want everybody being prayed for. Back over here in the corner. Back over here. Over here we have a couple of people. Guys, take a look around over here. Right here. Yes. Any, right here, right here, right here. I need, 
I need, I need someone over here. Can somebody, can somebody help me over here? Joel, why don't you go on over, right over there? Raise your hand again. Right there. Right there. Right? Anybody else not have someone? I want some agreement in prayer or this. You need someone standing with you in the morning. Right back over here. I need, I need somebody for right here. Ministry team, look around if you don't have somebody to pray for. Back over here. Okay. Here we go. Thank you. Anybody else? This is not time to stand alone. Right here. Great. Right here, Ryan. Right here. Right here. Right behind. Uh, yeah, you got it? Okay. Anybody anywhere else? This is not the time to stand alone. Sorry, I think someone's got their hand up, but I can't. Somebody's pointing, but I can't see them. Right there? Where, right there? Matt, you? Okay. Need somebody to come back here with Matt just and just join him in prayer. We want agreement. That's touching any one thing. Two, touching any one thing. It shall be done. Yeah, thank you. We pray courage over everyone in this auditorium right now. Courage to face, to face the yes say no to their no and say yes to their yes to God's instruction to say yes to that which he's calling them to ask for courage in Jesus name to come upon you for the wealth of the kingdom to be released towards you as you say yes for those of you who are battling It may look like you're surrounded, but you're surrounded by Him. It may look like you're surrounded, but you're surrounded by Him. Yeah. This weekend I was with a man who had had, uh, in two years he had had 20 to 30 prophecies that he was going to minister to priests and kings and people in authority and and he just didn't believe it was true about him and and he and so he kept blowing off the word and um, finally the word came again and he asked a prophet what does it mean when you keep getting the word over and over and over again and and he said well in this case it means that you're resisting what God is saying and he said to resist the word of the Lord is to resist the Lord himself wow. and he got down and he wow. began to repent and two weeks later, he was with President Bush, uh, giving him counsel, and also commissioned the current president of Mexico. And right now, he's an advisor to President Trump, uh, going six to seven times a year. He pastors a little church of under 100 people uh, in Waco, Texas. And, and this Lord, the Lord brought acceleration from his yes, and that's the part I wanted to bring. Yeah. I feel like as you have said yes to the Lord, that you have drawn resources, you have drawn acceleration, you have drawn partnership with angelic hosts, and you have drawn uh, strategic partners just with the power of your yes. Yep. And so we release yep. the spirit of acceleration. Yeah. We release angelic alignment. We uh, release supernatural assignments and partnerships in Jesus' name. That your yes is going to have a magnetic polarity to draw in resources, to draw in team members, and to accelerate destiny over your life in Jesus' name. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. I'm surrounded. 